guys, it's Mickey Max, and today I'm going to be talking about something that's really weird. Really weird, really weird, really weird, and I was not expecting to find what I found on this subject, and I'm kind of like freaking out. I was literally up until like 2 o'clock in the morning, like reading into this and kind of freaking out. Like I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like this is something unbelievable and whenever I was started researching I couldn't believe it and there was not a lot of content out there about this and I was like how is there not more information on this it is crazy because this place is so well known this place is so well known in the area that I'm from and that place is Chimney Rock y'all this is unbelievable I talked to you guys many times about ghosts and abnormal things in nature and just the crazy paranormal crazy stuff but never have I before talked to you guys yet about what I'm about to talk about and that is flying beings with wings that were sighted in Chimney Rock yes you heard me right it's crazy but i'm definitely excited to talk about it all right so you guys the story all starts in Asheville, north carolina in a place called chimney rock which i have been and my parents have been it was actually my parents went out with my sister for the first time um you know my dad had had my sister from a previous marriage and my mom was getting to know her and this is the first like date that they went on with her and they took her to chimney rock if you don't know what chimney rock looks like um i'm gonna insert a picture right here and you can see what it looks like for yourself All right, so what happened at Chimney Rock that has completely shocked me and made me feel like, oh my gosh, what is this? So, <laughs> in 1806, a little girl named Elizabeth Reeves was outside playing. And she told her brother that she saw some someone on top of Chimney Rock. And this was not common at the time because it wasn't a park. It was just like a random land structure like near where they lived. The people didn't like commonly go to visit this place. It was just a place, you know, it was before it was a state park. So this was weird. This was really weird for a man to be on Chimney Rock. So she told her brother Morgan and he was like, yeah, yeah, like, oh. It's my sister. She's just making up things. Like, it's just, you know, whatever. And then he saw it and he was like, wait, what? There's a man on top of Chimney Rock? And so this girl and her brother saw people on Chimney Rock flying through the air. Like, flying through the air. And According to what they said, these people, you couldn't really tell what their gender was. They were all cloaked in white and they flew. Flying people. All right, so the mother, Patsy Reeves, was called over and she saw the same thing that they saw, as well as Polly Reeves, which was the youngest daughter. And then the neighbor, Robert Searcy, also saw the same thing thing and there were other people I don't know what the names of the people are but there are other people who also saw these apparitions so what they saw was a crowd of people flying up to the top of chimney rock when they gathered they hovered in the sky and then they disappeared this account was printed on the Raleigh Register and Gazette and it was also cited in Edward Augustus 
Kendall's travels through the northern parts of the United States in the years 1807 and 1808. This whole thing that they saw lasted for an hour. Could you imagine seeing these flying beings and it lasting for an hour? So I found another source and it said that this happened on, on August 7th. And this source discusses what was in the Gazette. The Raleigh Register and Gazette. So Betsy Newton, Reverend George Newton, D. Dickey Esquire, I think, of the county, they all saw this. And it was communicated to the editor of the Gazette, Mr. Gales at the time. And it was that Patsy Reeves and her daughter were in a cotton field and they saw the man on the mountain. Morgan, he was 11 years old. He was the son and he also saw it, like I was telling you earlier. And what that Gazette said was that two people rose above and then one more uh, rose above and then three more people rose above and then they flew off. Okay. And they also said at the same evening, same time, bright rainbows from the sun that went to the west with no clouds or rain also appeared and they didn't know if it was connected or not. But let me also include this. Not only did that happen, but something else happened. So we go forward in time a little bit to 1811. And in 1811, there was something else that someone saw. And this time, a bunch of people saw a pair of armies riding small winged horses that met and fought in battle in the air. So, basically, over several evenings in the summer that year, a lot of people saw this in a lot of different locations near Chimney Rock. The battle over Chimney Rock was the last one that was seen, though. Witnesses said that they heard, like, groans, like someone was injured, and that they heard, like, metal clashing up against each other like swords. The battle lasted for ten minutes. Could you imagine seeing winged horses and people on winged horses battling for 10 minutes and probably thinking I'm out of my freaking mind. Like I'm just, I've went completely crazy. That's what I would think at least. So the defeated army, like one army won and the other army was defeated. The defeated army retreated and the army that won disappeared into the darkness. Sounds really weird to me. There were newspapers that reported about this battle too and there was a meeting in Rutherfordton. I can't say that word. Rutherfordton? Rutherford, Rutherfordton. I can't say that word. I'm so sorry, you guys, if you live there. Where they basically, they tried to figure out what the battle was. And the conclusion that they came to was that it was a reenactment from God of the Revolutionary War. The first thing that I thought of whenever I heard this, you guys, was... I didn't know that the Revolutionary War had flying winged creatures. I don't think that's it. I think that was a good explanation for what they had at the time and what was believable to them at the time, but I don't think that's what that was. There was one more time that things were seen and this was also in the 1800s and it was in 1891. A professor, children, and an elderly woman saw people floating around the side of the mountain. They saw bright beings flying wearing white gowns. Hey guys, I'm back. My battery died. So anyway, let me uh, give you the last couple details that I was going to talk about. <clears throat> Alright, so I last spoke with you guys about um, 1891 when a professor, children, and, and an elderly woman saw people floating around the side of the mountain. <sighs> Alright. The beings they saw were also wearing white gowns. Let's digress for just a second and talk about the explanation that could be linked to religion and the lore around the area. And this is um, about the Cherokee and uh, Catawba natives. In Cherokee legends, from what I understand, now 
tell me if I'm wrong, uh, anyone who is out there and is Cherokee or even part of Catawba, like, if you guys, like, believe something differently, please let me know. But from what I understand, they believed in the little people. They also believed in giants. There were, like, different types of little people. And some of them... Some of the little people were the Dogwoods, Moon-Eyed people, which I'll probably end up doing a video on, and uh, the Laurel people. Those were a couple different ones. I did some further research and I found that the uh, Cherokee and Catawba found the Hickory Nut Gorge as sacred. This was a sacred place for them that was by Chimney Rock. <laughs> According to the legend, um, I cannot pronounce this, so. I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this. The Suwali Nuna was land that was past the stone pillar. Apparently it was like a trading path that went along Swananoa River and went through the gorge to where the land of the Catawba was. The area was used in search of tobacco and according to legend, there were uh, the Yunwe Sunsti, Sunsti, oh, the little people basically that I was referring to, and they were guardians of the sacred tobacco. It was the Sal, Sal, Salu, T S A, apostrophe L U, um, basically tobacco, <clears throat> and this area held a lot of different types of beasts and spirits according to their legend. So, <sighs> this is a lot of information. In 1811, a lot of respect, respectable men also saw these winged warriors. Now, I don't know if, I don't really know what these apparitions were that these people saw. But what I do know is that this is one of like the legends that relates to this. And the land itself was sacred. They apparently like the creature, the, the thing that I was talking about, the Yunwi uh, Sudsti, the little people, they would guard it pretty like rigidly like they would not let anyone through because this tobacco was so sacred to them <sighs> I mean you can imagine like I don't know like what if it was them I don't know um I don't know what they normally appear like I just know that this area is an important area in history and it's also important it was important to a lot of people even before you know we came over here you know like the English settlers even before the English settlers and all of the other settlers from Spain came um, crashing into this area it was a sacred area and it was something that deserved respect I, you know I'm inclined to believe this one I know it's kind of out there but the fact that it was in newspapers, the fact that they held a town meeting to explain it, the fact that there's so many stories, you know, it just makes me feel like this one is real. It is a little out there, like I said, but I don't know, I really enjoyed learning about this because it was so different than the content that I normally film about. It's kind of positive and it's kind of like just so cool. Like, how could you imagine seeing all that? Like, that would be incredible but what I find interesting is that people didn't really see much of that after the uh, 1800s like it, you know it was just around that time period anyway if you like this video please don't forget to like and subscribe I really enjoyed making it I really enjoyed looking into this history I plan on um, talking about some more of like Cherokee history and I don't know I want to talk more about what they believed in because I feel like it's so relevant to this area and a lot of people don't know much about it so I will be researching and hopefully I will be able to pronounce some of this stuff a little bit better 
I know that my pronunciations of a lot of this stuff probably was not up to par. It probably wasn't the greatest and I apologize for that. If any of you guys would like to hear anything specifically about North Carolina or haunted history of anywhere or you know miss legends of the area just anything at all like please let me know down in the comment section and I love you guys thank you so much for supporting me bye bye